Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the table. Today, we are taking a look at a new knife from Rosecraft Blades. And this one I've been looking forward to because I really do like these well-made traditional knives that come in at a budget. So this right here is the Appalachian Jack. So what we have here is a slip joint knife with some black micarta scales. And uh, this knife right here, it reminds me quite a bit of the Rough Rider Reserve series. And I think it's the same brainchild behind it. But what we have right here is just a beautiful single bladed knife. We have a really nice satin clip point here. But let's take a look at the specs and the overall size because this knife is actually a bit bigger than you might think. So taking a look at the overall length right here. So let's just hold it up to the ruler. We can see the overall length is coming in at almost eight inches. So about seven and three quarters. And that's because we do have this special little nub on the end, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but the cutting edge, let's take a look at that. So right here in terms of cutting edge, we're a little bit under three inches. Um, but of course, the entire blade length is coming in close to three and a half without the cutting edge. So big knife in hand, which is actually kind of nice because in my opinion, too many traditionals tend to err towards the smaller side of the spectrum, which is great if you're looking for pocketability, but sometimes you just want something that's going to fill the hand and has a lot of cutting potential. So really, really nice action on this knife as well. So of course, being a slip joint, uh, we do have a nail nick right here. So this is definitely going to be a two handed opener. And so it opens smoothly. It's not a nail breaker, which I was very pleased to find out. So the blade itself, you can take a look at it right here. I love the satin grinds, looks really nice. And we do have some markings on here and this is actually pretty nicely done. So take a look at the logo, uh, Rosecraft Blades. And you can see, of course, the decorative little rose on there. So that's actually looking pretty nice. And on the, the reverse side, we do have the D2 steel marked there. And this is the 003. And we also have that little maker's mark. So it looks like an A with crossbones. And I believe that it stands for um, Andy Armstrong, who I also think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's also the brainchild behind some of the uh, Rough Rider Reserve knives as well. And so he works with Rosecraft now. And so even on this little piece of swag they have here, ah, swags, okay. <laughs> but you can see all the maker's marks for their designers. And there is the A with the crossbones. So of course we can see that on the blade. So really cool, see that there. Um, the blade itself though, Nice and sharp, no performance issues right out of the box. But one thing you might have noticed um, is that right here on the blade, we do have a little sticker on there. And of course that does signify this knife. Um, as with you know all the Rosecraft blades, as far as I can tell, are in fact produced in China. And so nothing wrong with that. And of course they are required to put that China marking on there, which is interesting, they put it on a sticker because I have noticed that um, some of my, I wanna say kissing crane knives also use the same sticker uh, to put the China designation on there. So once you peel that sticker off, it's not going to have China billboarded all over your knife. And for some people that makes a difference. Um, but of course, I think it's pretty common sense. You should know the country of origin of the knife. It is made in China. Uh, but of course, let's take a look at the handles here. I do like this black micarta. It's very smooth, very polished micarta. The transitions between the bolster and the micarta are smooth, which is great. And the shield, the shield looks kind of like a little acorn. I don't know, is that supposed to be that? <laughs> I think it looks nice though. It's sunken in there very well, very flush, uh, very shiny look to it. You know, the whole knife is a very shiny, smooth appeal. The lines on the back spring, let's check it out. So flush right now, let's take a look at the half stop. Still very flush and fully opened. Yeah, looks good. So great fit and finish in there. And of course, for a slip joint, we can take a look inside. And even the construction on the interior is pretty clean. Looks like there's a little bit of markings on some of the steel in there, but I think that's just on the steel itself. It's not something that's dirt or grime because a lot of foreign produced slip joints, sometimes they just get real grimy in there. You know, a lot of factory grease, things like that. And so the uh, Appalachian Jack avoids that. And that again be is because this reminds me so much of that Rough Rider Reserve line. I mean, it would not surprise me one bit if these were made in the exact same factory by the exact same hands. But what makes this knife a little bit different than most traditionals I have seen is, of course, that we do have this multifunctional tip on the reverse end. So it's uh, kind of pokey, but as you can tell, it's like a tapered end, and this is used, can be used as a pry bar or a pry tip. 
Um, so that way you're saving your blade in case you need to actually pry with your knife. Um, but it kind of tapers inward, so you could definitely use that as a flat edge or a flathead screwdriver. So definitely a dual purpose there. And it's definitely, it's just one solid piece of the back spring. So it's not going to snap off or anything. Um, but that's a kind of the kind of the unique feature of this particular design, which I like, because of course, traditional knives often have multi blades, multi tools, um, but they went with a single blade here and our multi tool is fi fixed on the back. So now if you pocket carry this, will you notice that maybe, um, but I think for a lot of traditionals, if you're going to carry it in your pocket, you should use something like a leather slip. So this one is from traditional pocket knives. This is, I think their large slip and we can see it fits the Appalachian Jack just fine. And so that way that pokey tip is not going to be messing with your pocket or you're not going to be feeling it, anything out of the ordinary. And this keeps the knife actually quite well protected as well. So kind of nice. Um, but in comparison, of course, I, like I've said, Rough Rider knives, those reserve line, very similar. And of course, I'll pull one out that I think is a great example for comparison's sake. This is their clasper. So this is another big hefty slip joint right here. So look at those side by side. Can you not see the family resemblance here? Um, right down to the black micarta being very smooth. Uh, the bolsters, of course, the even the overall size is actually kind of similar, um, but this is just a big honker of a knife right here. And uh, they both use D2 steel. And uh, again, where, I, where it might be an improvement on your end, we can see the China sticker on here, which is removable, which is cool. But on the Rough Rider designs, we do have the China marking on the blade itself. Um, so, I mean, I guess it just depends on what you prefer. I think most people would probably prefer to take the sticker off and not have to see the China marking. But I don't know if anyone really cares like that as much as people like me do. <laughs> but just side by side. I mean, check out. I mean, the fit and finish is so similar. So similar. They're both super well made. Um, we can see, of course, steel liners on the Appalachian Jack, brass on the Clasper. But really... <laughs> These knives are like, you know, brother and sister, essentially. So very good comparison there. Um, but I like that this is a nice hefty blade for a traditional knife. And um, I do look forward to more of the Rosecraft Blades uh, traditionals that they should be coming out with. I missed the first one, uh, but this one I, I paid attention because when uh, Blue Creek Knives dropped it, I think it was on Black Friday or around there, Cyber Monday, um, I immediately purchased it. So uh, I always do rec recommend Blue Creek Knives. They're a great retailer, ship super fast. Um, they always have discount codes available. And so for the price of this knife, which without discounts is like 35 bucks, that is a good deal. Because even the Rough Rider Reserve Knives, those usually come in between 40 to $60. And so we're getting this really amazing D2 traditional for 35 or less shipped to your door. That is value, my friends. So. Let me know what you think of this knife. This is actually really cool. I love the Appalachian Jack right here. Exactly what I was looking forward to. But again, if you have any comments, please drop them below. Would love to hear what you think about this knife. Great traditional, no flaws that I can see. And I uh, just hope you all have a knife day, Warren. See you later.